how sugar is actually made, sugarcane farming and harvesting and processing. Sugarcane cultivation depends on the regional climates, but mostly it's grown from January to March and its harvesting seasons start from December to March. The plant demands a duration between 12 to 18 months to be able for harvesting. Although being a tropical and subtropical crop, it grows well in hot and humid climates with a temperature ranging from 21 centigrade to 27 centigrade. Sugarcane harvesting. Sugarcane harvesting is carried by three machines. One does the main operations, which is the cutting of the cuttings and laying them on the field, while the second, with giant trucks, pick up the harvested crops and places them in the third machine that's opted to load the crops and take them to the processing sections. The machine has the ability to harvest 6,000 square meters in one day. The adoption of these machines is helping the farmers to meet their harvesting targets and helping them to lesser damage to the crops too. This also gives them the best yields to provide a higher quality of sugarcane to the factories that extract the sucrose for the production of sugar. How sugar is made in the factory. Sugar is a blessing from nature, which enriches sweetness in its taste that's blended in every sweet dish. You already know that sugar is produced by the plantation of sugarcane or sugar beet. Presently, according to estimation, 16 million tons of sugar are being consumed each year. Producing such an ingredient that's used in sweets is not easy at all. So let's illustrate today how this ingredient is made. This is why we physically toured a sugar factory to experience the process. Sugar is mostly made from sugarcane grown in the fields and mostly grown in climates similar to Brazil's. In the same way, it's also grown in Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. The sunny weather is the best element in the growth of productive sugar canes. Mostly, cultivation is done at 350,000 square meters. It's cultivated with the leftovers of the extracted sugar canes. During its harvesting season, it's harvested and transported to the factory for further processing. More machines work best for harvesting sugar canes, and most farmers prefer such machines. This machine plucks the plants, and its rotating blade has the ability to pluck three meter long sugarcane plants and chop them while the leader is sent back to the field. The harvesting machine initially cuts the leaves of the plants. The machine is then pushed forward by the felling roller, and meanwhile, it cuts the roots into two pieces. This machine can clear one field of sugarcane in one day. This machine can harvest 60,000 square meters of sugarcane each day. The machines blow the leaves for animals that are present on the farms or consume the leaves for survival. There's only one risk that scares the farmers the most, which are the strong winds and hurricanes that can severely damage the crops. So to overcome this issue, the leaves of the remaining crops are chopped a day before harvesting with the assistance of a machine that comes with sharp blades. The harvesting machines go to the plants and put the cane pieces into the trunk attached with a tractor following the machine. Every sugar mill demands 3 million tons of cane each year. This is why they're loaded first and then taken to the mills and then processed into sugar. Each truck, as you can see in the video, ships 23 tons of canes each day. Among these purchases comes the most famous brand of sugar, Domino, whose research and development director himself observes the process of turning these canes into pure sugar. He says, 
people don't appreciate the efforts that are taken to produce millions of five-pound sugar bags each day. They don't know what it takes to do all this. From unloading trucks on a large conveyor belt, the issue is that sucrose is concentrated inside the cane truck. The process begins with the chopping of the leftover canes into smaller pieces, about 15 meters, and escalating them towards grinding machines. Mostly in the sugar mills, you'll see movements every second. The grinders pump the juice for extracting more sucrose and end up giving the best results of sucrose extraction, but with mud and stones. This is why then the sucrose is filtered to remove the contaminated sucrose at a temperature where this dirt floats on the surface. Then the enzymes and microorganisms are removed. The sucrose is steamed at 110 centigrade. Then comes the time to convert the sucrose into pure sucrose crystals by evaporating the excess water. This is why the concentrated liquid is pumped into crystallization chambers, adding small sugar seeds that are added now and stuck to them for forming crystals. But these crystals are integrated with molasses. It's a product that bestows the brown sugar and gives them color by separating two products here. The sticking solution is now centrifuged at 1200 revolutions each minute, just like a washing machine does. The machine separates the filters of the sucrose by small holes that are present in the drum of the machine and traps the crystals. They now transfer the molasses into 11.4 million giant tanks. For storing the sugar, Giant storage sections are made in the factories. Now the total 3,000 tons of sugar that are produced now only makes 40% edible sugar. When the sugar is refined and clarified, only 20% has remained as the factory's total output. They produce sugar by using it for any purpose like industrial, domestic, etc. These sugars are now packed into several packages while the machines can fill 2,500 small sachets in each minute without even wasting one single grain of them. The factories pack the sugar depending on the area of supply, like it would be in different packaging for hotels, different packaging for household use, etc. 